Hello everyone, welcome to the 2022 World War II lecture series brought to you by the Philippine World War II Memorial Foundation, uh, Field War Foundation and FAME, the Filipino American Memorial Endowment. So today's topic is very timely as uh, this April, we will be commemorating the 80th anniversary of uh, the fall of Bataan and the eventual death march. Uh, which was one of the most atrocious events of World War II. And uh, very timely also because of what's happening now in, uh, in the world, uh, what's happening in Russia and Ukraine, and seems like hindi natututo ang mga tao. So let's hope and pray that, you know, that will be resolved soon. Anyway, for I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions for our um, speaker today. For those of you in Zoom, you can type in your questions at the um, chat box or the Q&A box. And for those on FB Live, you can type in your questions at the comments section. Uh, thank you everyone for you know uh, being with us this Saturday morning. I know a lot of you have errands, but uh, thank you for choosing to be with us. <laughs> I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. Um, our guest speaker is the founder and executive director of Bataan Legacy Historical Society, which worked successfully with the California Department of Education between 2014 and 2016 to include World War II in the Philippines in the U.S. History Curriculum Framework for Grade 11. Talo pa tayo. Dito, di tinuturo sa ating history lessons masyado. No? So she's a founding board member of the U.S. SSTLS Foro Tanidad campaign and a member of the Board of Trustees of the Aircraft Oops. Carrier Hornet Foundation. She is also a playwright and a filmmaker, having created short films about World War II in the Philippines and plays about historical events. Friends and viewers, please welcome the superwoman of World War II history advocacy, Ms. Cecilia Gerlan. Good, good morning, good evening for those of you in the States. Good evening, Ate Cecil. Good morning here. <laughs> good morning, Philippines. Good, morning. good evening, uh, United States. Um, thank you so, so very much, Des, uh, to Filipina World War II Memorial Foundation and to FAME, Filipino American Memorial Endowment Foundation, for uh, inviting me. This is really an honor and a pleasure considering. Uh, Rico Jose, Hampton Sides, James Scott. So uh, it, it is truly an honor and a privilege to be with you. All right. Thank you very much, Ati Cecil. I'm sure uh, a lot of them, and dami nang, I don't know, when I posted this in several Facebook pages, there were already a lot of uh, comments na, like their grandfathers oh. were veterans, their fathers yes. were veterans. Ati Cecil herself, her father was a death march survivor, hence yes. her interest in, you know, uh, her interest in the, the Bataan history and the love for World War II history. Right. So without further ado, Ati Cecil, nag-aantay na silang lahat. <laughs> nag-aantay. Oh my yes. God. Uh, <laughs> so I you just want to mention, you know, fame has, uh, has been at the forefront of uh, building and restoring these Bataan death march uh, markers. And it's a small private foundation. It's yes. it, it that relies on donations. So I just want to thank Fame for um, you know maintaining uh, these uh, markers. And so mga kababayan for those in the Philippines, uh, please help Fame and ensure that these markers are maintained you know yes. uh, there's only a few people who are are working on this i mean literally so um so thank you fame thank you phil m uh war memorial foundation world war ii memorial foundation for all your work in the philippines so let me start you, my Ray. presentation let me start the uh presentation by giving a short introduction about Bataan legacy you know, when I started the organization, uh, I don't know, 2011, 2012, I had no idea of, of what it entailed uh, before I started uh, researching. You know, what I knew was what I heard from my father, which uh, I didn't know was uh, just the tip of the iceberg. So, but I want to thank so many people who have helped me uh, historians, researchers like Bob Hudson, 
um, Fred Baldassare, so many people have been so generous in sharing their uh, research and uh, decades, uh, you know, over two, three decades, four decades maybe of research. So this is my father, as Des said, uh, he was part of the death march. He was uh, with the 41st Division, with General Lim's division. And when I was growing up, um, the way he framed the, the death march when we were small kids, he was like a, a comic. So when he was talking about the death march, we all laughed because we all he had all these uh, sound effects and uh, he, he was funny. And it was only after I wrote a, a play uh, based on a book that didn't sell uh, that I found out the extent of what happened in uh, Bataan. And after reading a, an analysis of the 41st Infantry Regiment, where my father was, uh, which was part of an officer's training course at uh, Fort Benning, I cried when I read this because I never knew this. And when I asked my father, um, Dad, did this really happen? How come you never told me? And he broke down. And apparently that is the um, reaction of most of the veterans. They never told their families of what really happened. And so what's the mission? So at that time in 2011, 2012, um, you know, uh, there wasn't really much information about the Filipinos uh, who participated, I mean, at least here in the United States, about the Filipinos who participated in the Battle of Bataan, the Bataan Death March. Most of the books written here are from American perspective. So I thought that the Americans made up majority of the soldiers in Bataan. And when in fact it was the reverse, uh, seven eighths of the main line of resistance were made of Filipinos, made up of Filipinos. About uh, 110,000 Philippine Commonwealth, 12,000 Philippine Scouts, and about 19,000 Americans. And so the mission is to instill civic pride and, and engagement in our young adults through the lessons of World War II in the Philippines from the perspective of both Filipino and Americans, not just the soldiers, but also the civilians. And so uh, as Des mentioned earlier, we had an opportunity uh, in 2014, we learned that California's uh, uh, curriculum framework was up for revision. This happens only every 10 to 12 years. So we were fortunate enough to, um, to uh, participate in this process. Um, just, just to let you know, I'm not an educator. I'm not in the, I'm not a teacher. Uh, but what happened was there was a legislation in California that was passed in 2011, AB 199. And what it called for was it encouraged for the inclusion of the experience of World War II Filipino veterans in the uh, history uh, curriculum framework in California. But then nobody was working on it. In 2014, we found out that nobody was working on it simply because the legislation was not a mandate. It said it encourages. So we had to go through the process. It, it was an open public process. Uh, and uh, there were so many people, so many people helped, uh, politicians, uh, not just politicians, but uh, educators, uh, veterans groups, uh, a lot of non-Filipinos. And so this was a process which you had to attend. The Department of Education put out a draft. It's up to the public to address the draft. And, uh, you know, there were several drafts. And finally, on July 14, 2016, the State Board of Education approved the inclusion of World War II in the Philippines in Chapter 16 of Grade 11 U.S. History. That's U.S. History. And uh, so we uh, actually commissioned uh, several grade 11 history teachers to write lesson plans, which are available through the website, also with primary documents. And these are the events 
that uh, were included, the Philippine Commonwealth, the formation of the U.S. Army forces in the Far East, Battle of Bataan, Bataan Death March, Hell Ships. Hell Ships, as you know, were Japanese uh, merchant ships that were used to carry Japanese soldiers, civilians, uh, ammunition, armament, but also prisoners of war, two labor camps in Asia. And because of the uh, horrific conditions uh, on the ships, they were called hell ships because the, uh, the POWs were crammed in the hulls, the very bottom of the ships. I mean, literally like sardines with uh, no, uh, you know, no proper ventilation, no running water, no light. Uh, about uh, 1,500 died from these conditions. But uh, during the beginning of the liberation, from the beginning of the liberation, no, actually from 1942, I'm sorry, to 1945, these hell ships were bombed by friendly fire because the Allied forces had no way of knowing that these were carrying uh, POWs. So about 20,000 of them actually perished from the bombing. And then uh, I'll, I'll um, let me talk about the Tidings McDuffie Act because this is one of the primary documents that we used. So it was also known as the Philippine Independence Act because it provided for, it prepared the Philippines for its in, uh, eventual independence in 10 years. So, so these two um, representative, Representative McDuffie from Alabama and Senator Tidings from Maryland, they were the co-sponsors of this act. Uh, but there was actually uh, nothing benevolent about this act because actually it was the agricultural uh, industry in the United States which lobbied for this to prevent um, uh, tax-free goods or agricultural goods uh, coming from the Philippines. So a lot of the incentive for this act to pass came from the agricultural center, uh, sector. It also provided for the uh, military bases uh, after the independence of the Philippines. It also uh, uh, restricted the entry of Filipinos into the United States to 50, five zero a year and reclassified those Filipinos living in the United States into aliens. So that was the Tidings McDuffie Act, but that paved the way for the creation of the Philippine Commonwealth. This was the inauguration. And of course, General Douglas MacArthur became the military advisor. And then of course, war was happening, you know, first in China, 1937, the fall of Nanking and uh, the start of uh, World War II in, uh, in Europe. Uh, so just like today, uh, these lessons resonate more than ever uh, since World War II. Now in November, 1940, because the United States knew that it could not fight a war in two fronts. So Admiral Harold, uh, Howard, um, Harold Stark, not Howard, Chief of Naval Operations, uh, penned what was called Plan Dog Memo. There were actually four scenarios, A, B, C, D. This was D. So it was called Plan Dog Memo, D for dog. And what it was, was um, it became the Europe first policy because they knew they could not uh, uh, fight a war in two fronts. So most of the resources were diverted to Europe or were going to be diverted since war had not happened by that time. And so based on that, the war plan, Rainbow Plan 5, was um, created uh, between January to April 1941. We had what was called the ABDA, American, British, Dutch, Australian Command. And um, so uh, that in, in the uh, and in it are several colors. Japan was assigned orange, War Plan Orange. And actually, War Plan Orange was in existence since the 20s. And, but it was revised. It was called War Plan Orange 3. And uh, so in January to April 1941, uh, the primary uh, priority actually 
was the defense of the Malay uh, barrier. And the Malay barrier, as you know, held oil, which was needed by Japan. And so the U.S. Army forces in the Far East, Yusafe, was created on July 26, 1941. But initial mobilization did not take place until September of 1941. So majority of the Philippine Commonwealth uh, Army, majority, uh, were not even fully formed on December 8, when, uh, when Japan attacked the Philippines. And uh, this was this position. General MacArthur uh, thought that War Plan Orange was a defeatist plan because it called for the defense on the mouth of Manila Bay, which is in the Bataan Peninsula. And it called for the Yusafi troops to uh, retreat there and await reinforcement. But General MacArthur thought it was a defeatist plan. So he asked the troops to spread along the beaches because they knew that uh, Japan was going to land around Lingayen. And so that's what happened. But what happened was after uh, you know, the, the landing of the 14th Army led by General Homa, things went so fast that on uh, December 24, uh, General MacArthur reversed the war plan to revert to the original war plan orange uh, plan. And so on December 26, Manila became an open city. Oh, by the way, during the first week, uh, the Far East Air Force uh, was no longer in uh, full uh, capacity, actually. Uh, that's why the troops were fighting in Bataan without uh, any air support, uh, which is how we see now in, in, in Ukraine. They, they're fighting uh, without any air support. But between December 24 and January 14, there was the Arcadia Conference between uh, President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill, and uh, which sealed the Europe First policy. And but at the same time, you know, on December 28, President Roosevelt, um, by shortwave radio, gave this message. News of your gallant struggle against the Japanese aggressor has elicited the profound admiration of every American. Uh, in this great struggle of the Pacific, the, the loyal Americans of the Philippine Islands are called upon to play a crucial role. The people of the United States will never forget what the people of the Philippine Islands are doing this day and will do in the days to come. I give to the people of the Philippines my solemn pledge that their freedom will be redeemed. The entire resources in men and material of the United States stand behind that pledge. We are engaged in a great and common cause. I count every Philippine man, woman, and child to do his duty. And uh, that's what he said on December 28th. But on January 5, actually, the troops uh, in Bataan, uh, their rations were cut in half. And this was after General MacArthur said that miles of reinforcement are on their way. But the Filipinos, you know, they fought really hard. They showed their bravery. Uh, Sergeant Jose Calugas of the 88th Field uh, Artillery, who was on kitchen patrol, by the way, uh, you know, defended, uh, manned a... Uh, um, a machine gun uh, uh, post. And for that, he was uh, he received the Medal of Honor. And then Lieutenant uh, Alexander Nininger of the 57th Infantry Regiment in Nabukai, he died, and uh, but he received it, uh, the Medal of Honor posthumously. Uh, Narciso Ortilano uh, received the Distinguished Service Cross. Um, and then in the Battle of the Pockets, Captain Alfredo Santos of the 1st Regular Division, he uh, received the Distinguished Service Cross for uh, breaking through the Gogo, Qatar, and Tool Pockets. 
And then uh, February 3, um, Lieutenant Bianchi, William Bianchi or Willie Ball Bianchi of the 45th Infantry uh, received the Medal of Honor for his actions on February 3. Unfortunately, he died in the in Nuramaru, one of the um, hell ships. And, and so, you know, the bravery of the U.S. Army forces in the Far East, despite suffering from um, disease and starvation, they were able to give uh, the Japanese a good fight. Uh, it was intense, and a lot of Japanese, actually Japanese soldiers, perished. But of course, the resources of Yusafe were very limited. By uh, January, they were on half rations uh, starting January 5. By February, there was no longer any quinine distributed on the field. A lot of the men were getting sick with malaria, dysentery, avitaminosis by March. Um, combat efficiency was going down. They were put on quarter rations. And March 12, actually, uh, General MacArthur was ordered to leave the Philippines on March 12. So by beginning of April, uh, majority of the men were suffering from massive disease and starvation. And so, and by that time, you know, by, by uh, mid-March, uh, beginning of April, uh, fresh reinforcement from Japan were coming in. And so beginning of April was a massive um, bombardment of, uh, of Bataan. And, you know, the, Bataan was actually denuded. It used to be a forest. Uh, so they had cover when it was still a forest because they, I mean, they, had, they couldn't respond to the uh, air uh, attacks by Japan because uh, the Philippines didn't have any air force. But uh, beginning of April was the massive bombardment of uh, Bataan. Uh, it became denuded. And so by April 7, uh, General Edward P. King Jr., who was then the uh, commanding officer in Bataan, uh, knew that uh, it was futile to, um, to continue the war because there was only like two days worth of quarter rations and um, and uh, and uh, most of the men were sick, hungry. So uh, this was Edward P. King Jr. And so on April 9, 1942, uh, approximately 63,000 Filipino and 12,000 uh, American soldiers were forced to surrender. Um, majority of them were suffering from disease and starvation. The Japanese were not prepared for the uh, large number of uh, so, uh, soldiers who surrendered. So the soldiers were forced to march some 65 miles total uh, under uh, extreme tropical conditions. As you know, in the Philippines, April is the hottest month of the year. Uh, triple uh, digit temperature with 100% uh, um, uh, humidity. So those who could no longer go on were either beaten, bayoneted, shot, some were even beheaded. On April 12, by the way, there was an incident near Pantingan River where between 300 and 350 officers and non-commissioned officers of the Philippine Commonwealth Army were massacred uh, after they surrendered, they were massacred. That is called the Pantingan River Massacre. And unfortunately, there is no list of those uh, who perished except for a few names that were taken from the transcripts of the war crimes trial. There is no pump, nothing. Right. It's just coming out from the... Right. Uh, so when everybody saw that, 
we all ran towards there. Right. Because we were, uh, it was summer, summer, the heat of summer, mm -hmm. April. Mm -hmm. So there comes a guy, he was uh, drinking like that. Yeah, I don't know, uh, the, the guard, you know, just bayoneted him. No? When we were still walking in Bataan, the, sol the Japanese soldiers, they grabbed some girls and then they raped them. Another pregnant woman was bayoneted. She was carrying a baby. She bayoneted that woman. And for me, it's, I never forget that. I was crying and it would hurt me very much until I, I never forget that for many many years. Mm -hmm. Every time I remember, you know, it I feel very sad mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I I pity very much that woman who is pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, My other friend died. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He, he died first. On the uh, fish pond paddy, very big fish pond area. The, the buried them on the rice paddy there. You know, I pray to them. You know, when you know, we have been meeting the veterans uh, building in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. We exchanged our reminiscences. We could not hold our tears. Mm. Talaga maawa ka sa mga kasamahan mo niya na ang nanagay. I pitied him. Until now, I dream about him. They are good because they died so young to defend our country, the Philippines in the United States. I lay silent in my grave as sunsets come and go. Time lost its meaning quite some time ago. This earth that I lay under was once a battleground. And remains of men like me lay scattered all around. I hear the voices above me in steps of many feet. No one knows of our location, nor of our defeat. The children sing and play not far from where we lie. We hear their laughs and screams, and even when they cry, The sounds we hear above us are sounds of normal life. Not the sounds of bombs and bullets or casualties of strife. No sounds of screeching horses or sounds of rusty treads. Nor cries of wounded men soon to join the dead. Times have changed somewhat over a span of years. 
No longer do loved ones call our names accompanied by tears. We stood our ground as best we could and gave it all our worth. And one by one, we perished beneath the waiting earth. I only ask that you think of us, and hopefully you will. We were soldiers then, and we are soldiers still. So um, that was a uh, poem uh, written by uh, Robert Hudson, who is with fame. Uh, and it was in honor of his father, Richard Hudson, who was with the 31st Quartermaster uh, Regiment. Uh, so, um, and uh, every year, except for 2020, we hold a uh, commemoration of the Bataan Death March. So for those in California and the United States, uh, please come. This will be on April 10 at aboard the USS Hornet. And this year we are holding it at the Hornet because we are gathering descendants of the hell ships uh, or Yoko and uh, Inura Maru with Air Group 11. Uh, as some of you may know, or Yoku Maru and Enura Maru were bombed by friendly fire by Air Group 11, which was based at the USS Hornet. So this will be a, an event of uh, remembrance and reconciliation. And so with that, I end my presentation. Thank you, Ati Cecil, for that very insightful presentation. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, good, good. And, and you know, I forgot, uh, yeah, some people were saying they didn't hear it. I don't know why. Yeah, the video. But, uh, yeah, I was going to tell you, Ati Cecil, <clears throat> maganda yun. I've, I've seen that 2018 commemoration yun na video. If you can send it to me, we can post it on our Oh, thank FD you. Page. Yes, yes. Very, that was know, a very I, touching video, I remember. And, and, you know, as, as I said, Bob Hudson wrote that poem, and we're doing another one of his poem on April 10. Abba. And uh, <laughs> I just want to tell people the significance of Bataan Death March, because people ask, why do you want to talk about the Death March? They, they were beaten, they surrendered, but not too many people know that, uh, you know, the Filipinos, despite suffering from massive disease, starvation, and fighting without any air support, were able to delay the timetable of the Imperial Japanese Army of 50 days by holding on to Bataan for 99 days. And they did that despite mm -hmm. those odds. 
So uh, it right, it right. is uh, it is a big deal, and it gave you know the the United States time to harness their resources, and even uh, General Arthur, uh, you know, um, what's his name, um, Archibald Wavell, who was the commander of the ABDA, the American British Dutch uh, Australian Command, said during the Battle of Singapore, which only lasted for one week. He said, mm -hmm. the Americans have held out in the Bataan Peninsula against far heavier odds. So he was asking the commanding officer uh, of the Malayan command, General Percival, you know, you, you have to put up a fight. But unfortunately, you know, the Battle of Singapore only lasted for, for a week. Right, right. And uh, people fail to realize that there were more, way more Filipinos uh, fighting in Bataan and way more Filipinos who marched the death march than the yeah. Americans. So there yes. were around 10,000 Americans and almost 70, 60 to 70,000 Filipinos. So nakakalimutan ng ating taong bayan. And if anybody just looks at your family tree and go look for your uncles, grand uncles, I'm sure not at Cecil, there's a, a, at least one who fought in Bataan or or one who became guerrilla, a guerrilla after guerrilla? the war. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, so if you will just you know check your family, your family background, family history, it's really amazing. Always people ask me, why are you so interested in World War Two? Babae ka pa naman. Yan lagi sa, I'm sure you get that. That is yes, of course. <laughs> babae ka pa naman. So kung babae ka lalaki, it's really very interesting because it touched everybody. I think no Filipino family was not affected by, by right. World yeah. War II, no? whether uh -huh. it be a death of a family member who fought, a death of a family member under the Kempe Thai, or, mm -hmm. or, um, or um, extreme hunger and, you know, starvation mm -hmm. and, you know, uh -huh. any form of hardship. Definitely meron sa bawat pamilya. Filipino. So it's really very timely that we, we learn this, especially with April 9. Yes. April 9 coming. And you know, the legacy... As around this, Cecil, the young kids, bakit holiday yes. you April 9? They revel that it's a holiday, yay, no uh, classes. But why is it, why is it a holiday? A holiday? Right. I'm sure right. you'll get two correct answers out of 10. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, so you know, the legacy of uh, Filipinos during World War II still lives on today, uh, even here in the United States, because a lot of uh, Filipinos, especially from the Philippine Scouts, they were part of the U.S. Army. They were able to bring their families here. And actually, generations of Filipinos continue to serve in the U.S. Army, especially in the Navy. And uh, so, it, it, you know, the desire to serve one's country, to fight for one's freedom, it lives on uh, right. in, in the Filipinos. So, right. uh, you know, I think we should be proud of that. And, you know, I urge the educators, the politicians in the Philippines, this is the Philippines' greatest legacy. And I don't understand why it is not being mandated in schools. Uh, I understand that they're teaching uh, the history of EDSA for two weeks, but I don't understand why they don't teach World War II in the Philippines because the right. Philippines sacrificed so much. Right. So, you know, if we can do it in California, and by the way, it's not just California because California is one of the biggest consumers of textbooks, California and Texas. So any changes in these two states' curriculum framework are reflected in the textbook. So major publishers are obligated to include any changes in these two states. And these textbooks are distributed nationally. Wow. So people across the country, I've seen the textbook, although it lacks me, but, you know, it's distributed across the country. So students from other states are now starting to learn about World War II in the Philippines. So it behooves Wonderful. us in the Philippines that we are not doing it and we are doing it here. So I'm calling upon the uh, teachers, the politicians, because history should not be made political. You know, history, right. history. Very true. So yan, yan, uh, that's, the, that's the sad part that he says so when I was tutoring my kids no, when they were in elementary for their basic Philippine history class. Maybe two sessions, three, 
happy na when you know there's three sessions on world war ii and you know sabi mo nga, they spend more time studying martial law and stuff like that when world war ii was a very pivotal period in our history a lot of how we act now a lot of how we perform you know um everyday tasks and governmental duties has its roots in world war ii so that's correct mm-hmm. it's really very i know that uh I, i'm really amazed when i saw your curriculum kanina for the grade 11 it was really so complete ang ganda ati cecil and that said i'm sure there are many uh, teachers watching us and alam mo, a lot of uh, tour guides ati cecil are watching us because oh. they want to learn more so i'm really yeah. happy about this because you know it's not the run-of-the-mill tours that they do na Kung ano lang narinig, what they hear from the other tour guide they copy. No, a lot of them really want to educate themselves. So it's very yes. good. That said, that is Cecil. I remember you told me before that you had a parang mga you primary sources that you gathered, right? It's in your website, right? Uh, so anybody can access it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So for yes. those looking for so materials, so the lesson plans are on the website. The Ayon. the primary documents are on the website. It's free. Anyone wow. can <laughs> So this yeah. chapter 16 at Cecil in uh, World War II history there in grade 11, it's more or less how many, yeah, how many sessions, classroom uh, sessions? You know, I, I really don't know because I chapter see, okay. 16 is actually more about, actually, you know, they've switched. Before World War II was always taught, it was very Eurocentric. Yes. But yes. now it's more Pacific centric. Good, and, but <laughs> but you know, as you know, a lot of things happened during World War II in the Pacific. So, so we are just part of Chapter Sixteen, but we are so grateful that it is there because it enlightens people on what the Filipinos and Americans did uh, during World War II, and you know, especially nowadays with what's happening in in other parts of the world well especially with uh, ukraine yes. uh and uh so you know it, these lessons of war really resonate nowadays uh right, you know right, the right. lack of preparation and you know and united states didn't want to join the war until you know it was forced to after december 7 and fighting without any air support a lot of lessons uh, can be learned, and I think we need to to uh, revisit uh, these lessons so that uh, we'll know the sacrifices that uh, uh, our soldiers are making to defend our, um, you know, our freedom. As they right. say, freedom is not free, and that is true. I mean, it's not just a catchphrase. It's not just a slogan. It is true. So many, you know, so many people, and they don't, they don't do it. I mean, soldiers. I've met so many soldiers uh, since I started the organization, and uh, you know, I'm so amazed. I am, you know, I was never, uh, you know, patriotic when I, before, but but you know, after uh, meeting so many veterans and and so many soldiers, I mean, their heart is uh, in uh, in the right place. You know, it true fighting for one's freedom, making sacrifices. Uh, that That's what we have to do. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's really true that they were dubbed the greatest generation, no? Yes. Imagine, uh, imagine like you were saying about your dad. Imagine to Cecil at what? He was born 1919, so that was, he was 23, 22? 22. 22. I wonder what I was doing when I was 22. <laughs> yeah. 23, no? To Cecil, maybe just, oh my God. I, yeah. I like, I like kasi human stories eh. Mahira, uh-huh. Hirap pa ako mag-memorize ng mga numbers and, and infantry and mga ganyan. But I really like the human stories there. So yes, imagine yes. he was 22, 23. Okay. And then you fought for how many how many months? You know, you were green and untested. Kanina nga you said, di ba? Though the USAFE was created July. Mobilization was not until September. You know, and my father Arthur, wasn't called till November. Till November, you know, yes. Like, In fact, when when we were bombed, parating pa lang yung mga oh. reserves. And these are not regular soldiers. These were just reserves who had, you That's know, right. few weeks of training um, being called in. So they were green and untested. And then, saba ka na. So, I, you, you know, one, one, uh, up, com- one company in Monterey, it's the 40th uh, 
tank battalion. Uh, so they made up part of the 194th tank battalion in the Philippines. So out of 147, only 47 survived. Oh my, no? Yes. One, yes. Not, uh, less than a third. Oh yes. my. Imagine, yes. no? I want to say uh, hello to Marie Vallejo. <laughs> Hi, Ate Marie! <laughs> Thanks for Hello, watching! Marie. Uh, we have to thank Marie for spearheading the effort to uh, scan those World War II documents at the National Archives. If not for her, you know, I wouldn't have uh, gotten all these documents. Right, So right. thank you, Marie. Thank you for uh, spearheading that project. And Salud, advise, Ate Marie! I advise all of you to go to the PVAO, uh, Philippine Veterans uh, Affairs uh, Office website to uh, look at the documents. And uh, uh, those are uh, primary documents, yes, the primary yes. documents. So, so what you, happened Marie. was uh, years ago, Ati Marie and her team went to uh, the U.S. National Archives and just scanned yeah. and scanned. Ilan pages ba yun, Ati Marie? Made me millions. <laughs> of uh philippine related uh, world war ii archives no and um it's it's a treasure trove you know for researchers mm -hmm. there and teachers and it's now uh available can you on unmute the Marie? website you wanna you wanna oh, unmute, hindi, hindi ma uh, sorry hindi kasi ma, ma unmute pag oh, ano. okay. <laughs> anyway salute ati marie for that you know tireless effort in scanning oh, uh, yes. thousands of pages hundreds of thousands or maybe a million pa <laughs> Dami. I'm sure they overheat yung scanner nila, scanning daily, all those. And it's now, the wonderful thing is, it's now available for researchers, for yes. teachers. So it's there, no? Maybe mm -hmm. you can even find your grandfather's names there. Saan ba sila? You can look by, by, by for example, Guerrilla and let's say, ano ba siya? Hunters, ROTC. And then you can look at it and you can check, ano ba yun? The mm -hmm. roster there. So it's really mm -hmm. there. No? It's, it, mm -hmm. it's uh, something, it's a treasure trove, really. So right. for those of yeah. you who would want to learn more about World War II, plus the uh, yung, a website of the Bataan Legacy Historical Society, a lot of primary uh, so sources are there. So for our teachers, and sabi ko nga sa mga teacher friends namin, if you need help with your curriculum, help with materials, you know, uh -huh. learning learning aids, just, just call us. We'll give you uh, copies, pictures, whatever that you can use in class. And, and I, I know that the kids are not disinterested Cecil, because mm -hmm. we go around schools public and private schools in the philippines so all kumbaga, all economic uh de demographics no poor rich middle class mm -hmm. and we see the when we screen our movie honor about the world uh -huh. hero jose abad santos the mm -hmm. interest of the kids are there mm -hmm. Kaya mali yung na wala nang yung mga bata. they do oh, but no, it's just no, that they they if nobody teaches them so we call upon the teachers also if you want to do this screening it's a very good segue that's what many mm -hmm. of the schools do before they start their world war ii history lessons segue para you know it's easier for the teacher because you know the kids now are very visual so when they watch this yes. kita nila yung life ni Jose Abad Santos from the spanish revolution philippine american war and then he studied very hard and worked in the government mm -hmm. and then world war ii so you can call us. No, we can we can screen at, uh, at your respective mm -hmm. schools. Para, you yes, know, this will help yes. a lot in your uh -huh. teaching. Uh -huh. yeah. so there are I, a lot of materials uh, available. It's just that we have to present the right materials to the kids. Right. Are you interested in that? Jan. And you know, I'm just going to read a few comments. And, uh, sure, okay. sure. Um, a lot of people are thanking uh, thanking you for this lecture. Arthur Ray Barrera says, um, th "Thank you for this lecture." The father of my grandmother is a World War II vet, proud to be a descendant. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Thank, Thank, you. Itong... Thank you. And then uh, from, uh, wait, what's this? From Robert Hansen. <laughs> the Philippine Come government on. is afraid of offending Japan. <laughs> Hence, you, know, you were saying about think, the politicized I don't think kanina. we should be afraid to offend. I mean, if Germany, I mean, Germany has created all these memorials they have mandated right. the teaching of the holocaust in schools i don't know why we can't you know right. i mean we're just this is history this is history right i mean right, right. you cannot right. change history you right. know and in, in the you know at the, at the expense of your next generation not learning about this right at the you will you know just 
they removed. Remember, we put the the comfort woman statue at Ross Boulevard. Uh-huh. Na it was very beautiful. It was not offending at all. Magandang maganda yung pagkakagawa ng statue. But when the behest of Japan, the Philippine government removed it. So sabi uh-huh. why? Uh-huh. What are you so afraid of loans? Uh-huh. My golly. Uh-huh. Diba? And we anyway. have to think of, of the future generations. How right. can we how can we raise uh, responsible leaders of, of tomorrow if they do not know their own history? Exactly. I mean, how can we do that? Right. So, you know, I, I call upon uh, the politicians, the educators, please, you know, you should teach this. This is our legacy. Don't right. be afraid right. of offending <laughs> anyone. I mean, that's how it happened. And, you know, a lot of things that that uh, were horrible happened during the war, you know, even between Filipinos against Filipinos. Those things happened. I mean, war is a horrible thing. Right, right. So it has to be taught, really. Yes. Uh, so that, you know, we will, you will uh, foster future nationalists and patriots if we learn about our past. So, yes. na greet Miss RJ Tubal, hi, and Miss Barely Amelo, greeting you a very good morning and thanking you oh, for the lecture you. at thank the session. You. And mm-hmm. then, uh, some more questions here. From Dom Gamboa, great presentation. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then, Ati Marie uh, put in the, the, the website where you guys good. can take a look at the, you know, the U.S. National Archives that they scanned. So uh-huh. it's in the PVAO website. It's there in the chat chat box for those of you yes. who are interested. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. Says, so there's a question here from uh-huh. Ted. Hi, Ted. Hello, thanks again for this. I'm not sure if we can ask questions, but the Japanese offered some form of preparations. But I am curious, has the U.S. government ever publicly apologized or <laughs> recognized the colonization of the Philippines similar to their apologies to Greece? Argentina, Iran, and the state of Hawaii, for example. I highly doubt this, but at the will you have any you know, on that? Has the U.S. Uh, government apologized to the Philippines for their colonization? Uh, I don't think so. However, you know, the Recession <laughs> Act has never been repealed. That mm-hmm. I know. It has not been repealed. Although, yeah. you know, as you know, some benefits or paid to a few people, you know, as time went on, but it's still not a par with with the Americans. But but it's so sad that a lot of the uh, veterans died without seeing right. any benefits. Without, right, mm-hmm. right. And and really, this was meant for the USAFERA, right? The Cecil, which numbered around 70,000, 80,000 uh, soldiers. And, also, uh, and I saw. Recognized. Yeah, the they were all being the sworn in pa in 1941, diba? Yung sworn uh-huh. in in allegiance to the United States, that you're going to be a USAF, eh, and then uh-huh. you know, the Recession Act. Very sad, no? There were a lot of comments that it says when I posted our um, announcement for this lecture about the Recession Act. So, so what happened What, what happened at uh-huh. that time before the war? So Senator Carl Hayden from Arizona, who was the chair of the Appropriations Committee, And uh, Richard Russell of Georgia asked the administrator of Veterans Affairs, who was uh, General Omar Bradley, about how much would it cost to pay the benefits, the veterans benefits for the Filipino soldiers and uh, and the Americans. And the estimate was $3 billion. So (laughs) it was $3 billion. So in fairness to Truman, you know, the first uh, recession act that, that, that they tried to pass in January, he vetoed it. So, um, but in February, because this was part of a rider, it was inserted in a bigger bill, right? So in February and May of 1946, and mind you, this was before our independence, right? That's when they inserted the fact that the service of the Filipinos were not... Uh, deemed uh, as active service. And wow. by doing so, they couldn't avail of the uh, GI uh, bill. Bill. So, so this so goes for, at this I said, all the USAF uh, soldiers and the recognized guerrillas. Am I right? That's right, yeah. Wow. And actually, you know, uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of people died, uh, applied for it, you know, applied for recognition 
about 1.3 million guerrillas actually applied for wow. recognition. Maybe they were so afraid that they, were, they had to pay all these uh, guerrillas. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and, and so, uh, may, may sad, ano din kasi, you know, there's a sad story also at Isesil that a lot of the guerrilla groups padded their, you know, padded yes. their um, roster to get you know, uh, money. Yes. So that was mm-hmm. also, you know, maybe a, a ang tawag dyan, one of the reasons why, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. the Resistion Act was also thought about. But it's not really, it's not fair, especially to the, you know, the USAF who were really sworn right. in. Like when you see pictures, no, of uh, pre, pre-December 1941, when they were all being sworn in. I, when I saw that, I was so sad. Para sabi ko, wow, imagine these young boys from the province, you know, came to Manila with, you know, maybe just a, anong tawag dyan, you know, that woven... Uh, ano tawag doon the, the woven uh, isa lang bayong. luggage but it's bayong. not just bayo yung bayong. ganyan oh yung square ba? maybe yeah. we're just like that and you know leaving their families in the provinces and a lot of them did not even speak Tagalog uh-huh. from uh-huh. the 91st diba yung mga uh, 71st ba yun 61st uh, they did not even speak Tagalog so medyo and you know the, the report talaga. of uh, General Parker about what happened General Parker George Parker was the uh, commanding officer first of the South Guerrilla Forces and then Corps 2 which was you know the other half so Corps 1 yes. was Wainwright Corps 2 was uh, Parker. Parker it was so sad about the Filipinos you know because you know, uh, some of them didn't even have metal helmets. Some of them yes. had the, uh, you know, the ano tawag dun, gunit, uh, like coconut husk yes. helmets. Yes, some gunit. of them had only one set of uniform shorts. <laughs> Can you imagine? And then you know the sneakers for shoes, and and then uh, and then most of the arms and artillery go way back to World War One. So that right, uh, right. I don't know more than. General Parker said close to 70% of ammunition were duds because oh, they were man. so old. And, mm-hmm, and this was mm-hmm. a, a stark report by General George Parker. Parker uh, so, yes. you know, so, and we used these resources uh, as reference for uh, when we were doing the curriculum framework, uh, you know, when we were working on that, we coded all these military sources. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah, it's sad. And, you know, when, when the 2009, you know, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act was passed, the one-time mm-hmm. lump, uh, lump sum payment, you know, there was $198 million appropriation. So uh, close to, uh, in 1946, we were offered $200 million, I think. <laughs> but so in, in 2009, we were offered 198 million appropriation, of which oh, wow. uh, almost 43,000 uh, claims were filed. And out uh-huh. of that, only 44% were approved. So about uh, 9,000, over 9,000 in the United States, the ones who got the 15,000. And in the Philippines, about oh, over 9,000, 9,670, who got the 9,000. In the Philippines. Oh, okay. Right. This is, uh, yes, the 2009, yeah, 9,000. It's a one time payment only. One time payment. Wow. Yes, it was, it's a one time payment. Yeah. Guerrilla yeah, recognition a- program right after the war, 1945, 1940 to 1948, for benefits, death, and work with US liberation forces. Then the US Appropriation Act 2009 paid $9,000 mm-hmm. to Filipino soldiers living in the Philippines and $15,000 in the U.S. one-time payment. Why the disparity in the in the? <laughs> well, because they uh, equate, well, I guess, I don't know if it's the cost of living or what. Well, well no? through the years, you know, the 1990 Naturalization Act of Filipino veterans and then 1999 uh, Social Security Act which gave special benefits for certain World War II veterans. And then, of course, in 2003, uh, the VA extended its health benefits to the Filipino veterans. And and my father was one of those who benefited from the uh, VA. You know, at the beginning, you know, it was a gray area when, when, uh, oh, he's with the U.S. Army forces in the Far East. What's that? That's not U.S. Army. Yes, it is. But, but, you know, through the years... 
it was, uh, and then towards the end of his life, boy, they took care of him. So, so for that, I'm, I'm grateful. But there's, I mean, he was the exception, of course, but for the majority, never. Although right. in, in the Philippines, right, the, uh, there's a VA, uh, there was money given for the VA hospital there. So mm -hmm. that was uh, provided for by the United States. The uh, mm -hmm. so um, so small trickle. May kunting bawe. <laughs> trickle, but not enough. Not enough. May kunting bawe. And, and, and surely, you know, it it hasn't been repealed. But of course, in 2016, the Filipino Veterans Recognition and Education Project, spearheaded by uh, General Antonio Taguba whose father mm -hmm. was in Bataan, he, uh, they were able to lobby for the Congressional Gold Medal for the yes, Filipino yes, World yes. War II veterans. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful thing. And up to now, distribute. they're still distributing. Well, you know, the um, thing is, Congress only appropriated $13,000 to mint one gold medal, uh, which okay. will be on display at the Smithsonian Museum with uh, with an educational component. That's all. Oh, so oh. all these replica medals that are being given out, they are raised privately. Oh. They are raised privately. So oh, people my. have to give money <laughs> in to, order to get for, the medal. To get them. Right. And, and you know, the cost of the medal, when it first started, it was only $49.99. Now it's $160. Oh my, triple. Oh my God. <laughs> so, parang gasolina pala. It says it's like gasoline. It tripled in. <laughs> yes. So oh, I was so shocked when I saw I, I, $160. And ito and, yung, that's the sad part, though. Right? It, it has to be privately funded, like FAME, like what we're doing in FAME. All the 138 death march markers that you all guys uh -huh. see on the road from Bataan to Kapa, Starlak, were all privately funded by FAME. This started, yes. started in the early 2000s and it took eight years for us to be able to, you know, build all these 138. And then here comes a rogue bus or a right. rogue truck driver and then Wow, it's the marker. I'm to it, and end. tomorrow Bob right. Hudson will send us, uh, <laughs> will send us a uh, message with a picture of uh, you know, it's so sad because one time, uh, Leslie Maridita Leslie, she's watching, she's an uh, amazing, amazing woman who um, spearheads uh, fame, and she was telling me when she went to this public school in Bataana, Cecil, this was earlier, early 2000s. And uh, the, the objective of fame then was to put as close as possible the markers to a public school or to a school so that, you know, the, the school community will yes. more or less uh -huh. know this, uh -huh. protect this and, you know. But on the contrary, these kids were, you know, vandalizing this and such. So, uh -huh. Tito Leslie came down and, said, and talked to the teacher. And she said, why, why is this happening? And then the teacher said, eh, because it's government. Ah, uh mm-hmm. -huh. Well, hello. Oh my gosh, Devano, because it's that, government. That's the thing, so which goes back to alaga. education. So, it oh, goes oh. back to education, why we yeah, need yeah. to educate and first of all, our students. <laughs> right. And first of all, oh, it's, uh, not, it's not government. It was privately funded. Privately and, you know, funded. I really am in awe of you know, our early Bobby members. I've seen Rosalie and his wife, Rosalie, painting. Yes. <laughs> painting, those. sharpening, all the the yes. it, it gets faded through time. The yes. so, I said, Oh my god. I said, and what's yes, Bob. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a picture of kilometer zero in Bagak. I was just there last week and the tile is broken again. I don't know how that happened. So oh. you know, constant maintenance. So for all of you there who you know, proud descendants and all, if you would want to help us adopt the yes. marker, ad adopt or you know, help just help us. With, with how much, ano lang po yung makakaya, no? with whatever means. What, what's we the have. website of fame? Why don't you uh, give them Filipino the American Memorial Endowment. Uh -huh. So that's the website. And uh, so sometimes it's down, but you can go to the Facebook page and we, we try to answer all the messages. So mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is a big help. And and this has been a tourism, ano? this has become a tourism um, strong point for Bataan. And in their, in their ano, brochures, I saw 
puro bataan de wash markers but it was really it really is fame's project no so uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. and it, it's nice because like when my kids were younger and we would go to Mount Samat when they were like uh-huh. six seven years old my my eldest walang age ano po walang age limit there's no age limit there's no age requirement for learning World War Two my kids watch World War Two films as young as when they were four years old no uh-huh. so uh-huh. Uh-huh. it's a very good ano eh, to educational tool so right, mommy why right. is this 21 22 20 and then you tell them no these were the uh-huh. kilometers that the marchers uh-huh. did uh-huh. and you know uh when was that two week, two years ago now it's been two years before covid remember mm-hmm. we we brought a small group to on a world war two i mean people are so i mean because they're searching oh my grandfather my father my uncle my grand uncle they want to know where they were in the philippines so if you think about tourism just tourism alone i think the department of tourism should be able to maintain or help maintain these monuments because it's a tourist uh, draw. Mm. Yes. At least the uh, um, DPWH, the Department of Public Works and Highway of Bataan, mm-hmm. the province of Bataan, is helping helping us, okay. especially if they have to move it because of road widening. Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. They take care of the cost. At least Bob was able to you know, do a MOA with them uh, yes. uh-huh. as representative of fame, at least. Right. But there are still... Right. The rogue buses, the rogue right. <laughs> truck, truck drivers, you know, who uh-huh. ram into this. So, uh-huh. you know, so we really need uh, all the help we can get to maintain this 138 death march markers. Now, people ask, why 138? And 105 nga ba? At is ang death march? Because we also did the one starting from Baga and the Baga, one starting yes. from Maribela. So in total, uh-huh. there's 138. Markers. Okay. Okay. Oh, so Marie posted good, the uh, website for Filipino American memorials. That okay. uh, Oh, Marie, can you hold the medal again of the Congressional Gold Medal? Can you guys so, see uh, Marie Vallejo there? <laughs> so. Uh, Tama pala next time, ito, Marie, your co-host na din. <laughs> that's true. So they, you can uh, share the screen. That's oh, the Congressional there. Gold Medal. Oops. Uh, uh, I can't see medyo, it. That... Medyo umaano, no? Oh, nga, How big is it, Ate Marie? In. Like uh, three inches? Four inches? Siguro. Very nice. Oh. Very nice. Oh, very I, nice. I remember you yeah. gave me a rep, a copy at the Cecil. Eh. It's very oh, nice. Okay. okay. I love the I love the artwork done there. Mm-hmm. And diba, mm-hmm. Ate there's also a website, Bound by, ano ba yun? Bound by Duty ba yun? Yung about the, that precision act. Yes, uh, you can uh, go actually to the philvetrep.org, F-I-L-V-E-T-R-E-P.org, uh, right. and you'll find more information on the Congressional Gold Medal if you want to apply. Uh, so it's it's all on their website. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. And this so has another question. Mm-hmm. Uh, another they, question they on, the, on the yeah, uh, Restitution Act. Yes. Uh, the, but the the what do you call this the 26th cavalry the uh mm-hmm. what else the the philippine scouts they mm-hmm. were regular u.s army diba? Even yes. before the war were they included in the decision i don't philippine think scouts? so no uh, not, because not. they're u.s but army I think the philippine scouts after october of 1945 i think they were the ones uh uh, uh but then yeah yeah so but not the ones uh during the war Right. Um, yeah. so, so here in the Philippines, uh, at least we have PVAO, Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, to you know take care of our aging veterans, not just yes. the uh-huh. aging ones, but the the active ones as well. But I see there, I know, I see they're very active in in helping the our aging veterans, which oh, sabi mo nga at is still very. Wala na yatang ha, wala na yatang ganyan kadami no now maybe yeah uh, here not in the even Bay handful. Area, uh, I- yeah, there's one who was in the Battle of Bataan. He must be at least 102 years old. But the oh rest have passed on. Right. Yeah, because they're Very over sad. 100. Yeah. Yeah. That is why we hold these sessions so we will never forget. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doing so we will these never sessions. Forget. Yes. 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 Um, and um, masarap pa ang usapan, but you know, time is up. <laughs> Uh, like in life, all good things have to, you know, uh, have to s- stop at some point. <laughs> it is very interesting uh, conversation and very timely. 
especially Thank the 80th you. commemoration of Bataan with yes. what's happening in, in Ukraine and, and Russia and you know what's happening with our educational system. So we have to invite the Cecil for just the Recession Act and the veterans ano, one more time to say all the acts uh, pertaining to the veterans because a lot of them are interested. And a lot of them have never actually checked though their pa- grandparents were veterans. Parang, bayaan mo na, parang ganyan, di ba? So uh, you, you uh, see how, you know, they, they serve without thought of recognition, parang ganyan. Right. So a lot of them were like, nagulat din ako pag may ganyan akong kausap kasi, wow, parang, really? Hindi, 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 hindi kayo humingi ng benefits? <laughs> ko. Uh-huh, hindi uh-huh. na kasi nag ano, si tatang eh, mga ganyan. Uh-huh. Says, so there's still uh-huh. a lot. So And a lot of uh, them lost their records. So uh, yes, yeah, yes, it's, yes. It's, it's sad. But yes. it goes back to education. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello, educators. <laughs> the Department of Education. I call on the, the Department of Education. I mean, who else? True, will. true, true. Will uh, will work on this. I mean, it, uh, the onus is on them. You know, right. it's like it behooves us that we are not teaching the greatest legacy of the Filipinos when right, other right. people who are non-Filipinos. I mean, you should see the the student works uh, on the website, the Bataan Legacy. Some of them are not Filipinos. How did you learn about the decision? <laughs> you know, oh, this uh, this girl from Wisconsin. And she said, oh, my girlfriend, her grandfather, you know, was affected. Oh, yeah. So she came. I asked her to come during one conference. And uh, there's another Chinese-American who, who did a project about, uh, I mean, it is so heartwarming because, right. you know, it's universal. The injustice that was done to the Filipino soldiers. Yes. It's universal. It doesn't matter if you're Filipino, American, Chinese, whatever. You right. know, the injustice that was done to. And, and, you know, when I first, when I was first starting out the um, Bataan Legacy and I was talking about, you know, Recession Act, what happened to the Filipinos, how they were abandoned. And at first I was a bit apprehensive. Oh my God, I'm talking to these veterans. Uh, you know, American non-Filipino American uh, veterans, and are they gonna throw tomatoes at me or for <laughs> saying these things against the United? And afterwards, it's a universal response. Is this is not the American way? This right, is not right. right. Mm-hmm. You know, so right. um, it's a universal uh, response. You know, it's it's not right to yes, treat yes. one one group of people one way and another uh, another way right right so for the parents also watching no uh expose your kids as early as now uh yes it, either instead of going to the beach or whatever you know we have a lot of eye candy world war ii monuments here we have mount samat we have uh, kapas national shrine you know we have the manila american Cemetery, which yes. many people think is not open to the public, it is. Mm. So, ang gaganda po. So, bring your children there to, to they start have their interest. information center there. Wow, the, right. the information center is so good. beautiful. Yeah. Yes, beautiful. So, so you that's learn a one lot. Libre. It's all libre. It's all free. Yes, yes, yes. And it's open to the public. It's very yes. a lot of them gets overwhelmed when they get to the gate. But really, there's a sign. There's a harang. But really, the harang says. Open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Hindi oh. lang People don't come in that close to read the sign. I yes. they think it's a harang or something like that. Right. So, yeah, and bring your kids there. These are all free to the public kapas. And especially what, uh, pag diadala ko yung kids when they were young at kapas, I'll say, go run to ano, um, letter B. Look for a Benipayo there. Diba there's a <laughs> roster of all? Yes. And uh, then to my mom's side is Tiongson. Go run to letter T. You see if we have Tiongsons there. So they have that ano, yung parang, uh, sense of ano ba yan? Uh, belonging or sense of yes, history. Yes. Of Even though hindi yes. naman nila talagang kamag-anak diretso yung Benipayo. We don't know. no. But you know, there's a Benipayo who fought. Parang mm-hmm. ganyan. Yes. There's a Tiongson who fought. Mm-hmm. So you know, things like that. And, and yeah. with that, I'm, I, I guarantee that, you know, the kids will grow up to be nationalists and, and yeah. patriots. Or, and I hope yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, for those who were alive, you know, there were children during World War II. So if you have lolos or lolas 
who were kids during World War II, please uh, interview them about their experience during the war because, uh, you know, once they're gone, the memories go with them. So right. please interview them and uh, you'll learn a lot uh, right, from right. your That's lolos right. and lolas. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Before before it's too late, no? Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Uh -huh. uh, ako swerte because my mom always talked about the war, the liberation. She uh -huh. was 10 years old during liberation. Yes. She all, uh -huh. Even my pa ako, she, she kept talking about, you know, the hardships during that. So I think that's what started me on World War II history, the human stories, no? Uh -huh. So, yeah. napakaganda yeah. kasi. Lahat nandun sa World War II, nandun yung drama, suspense, no? This is still comedy, meron din. So, it's all uh -huh. there, no? So, uh -huh. sadly, this is still... Uh, this is a very you. interesting conversation, thank but we have you. to go. Uh, yes, thank you for thank you all so our much. viewers. And thank you to all the viewers. Salamat po. Uh, and visit, good luck at uh, Cecil. Wait, did you website. post your 80th? Oh, yeah, you did the poster kanina, yes. no? We'll, we'll share yes. it in our uh, Facebook you. page. For uh -huh. all our Filipino friends in California, I've, I've talked to two who will be coming to your Anna ah, Cecil. Great. The USS great. Hornet is April 10th, no? Uh, mm -hmm. Especially we call mm -hmm. on the Filipinos in the US to be part of this uh, uh, commemoration. And yes. that is spearheaded yeah. by Ati Cecil. And yes. uh, before we go, uh, we have some announcements. Okay, just an update on our signature campaign, on the no to the removal of the World War II heroes on our 1,000 peso bill. So yes. we've submitted the, the letter to the, how many bayon? Six? Uh, I forgot na how many. We submitted it early February to the six BSP governors uh, and, of course, uh, Benjamin Diokno, the main governor of uh, BSP. And what we did was to print all the signatures, the names and the addresses and attach this to the letters mm -hmm and send each one of them a packet containing the, our letter, our, our position paper, and you know. so one month has gone by without a response from them. So Oh my God. So okay. we will write another letter to follow them up. Baka yes. nervyos the letter natin. Oh so we really, goodness. really hope that this, you know, uh, what do you call this? This abomination will not push through. Every time now I, I pay, I look at the 1,000 bill, I get sad kasi parang, oh, hanggang kailan na lang ba itong silang nandyan, di ba? Right, so, right, it's fine right. with this, no? And then, right. um, Rodi, just, just so can we show the uh, second quarter schedule of our uh, webinar? Wait lang, ha? Uh -huh. We have the, the schedule. Hold on. And daming good ano, comments at Cecil kanina. Wait, wow. before, while we're waiting for the slides, uh, ito, from Vlad C. My grandfather mentioned he was part of the Phil Chai guerrilla group, maybe the Huachis. Oh. He said he helped evacuate the wounded in Manila 1945. So, Huachi group ito. Huachi. I can't mm -hmm. really confirm this and just have to take his word though, but I tend to believe him. Believe him, Mr. C. There is a Phil Chai guerrilla group named the Huachi, which helped mm -hmm. in the liberation of Manila in 1945. And, also and they were Los always like, attack them they or were very close to Yeah, yeah, the Lady of Los Banos, yes, they were there. So they were really very active and they were always uh, in tandem with uh, the Hunters ROTC guerrillas or the Markings mm -hmm. guerrillas, no? Or mm -hmm. the Hook Balahap. In fact, they're friends mm -hmm. with everybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when some of the guerrilla groups were fighting, they friends with all of them. So when action dito, you know, they're kasama there. When there's action mm -hmm. here, they're mm -hmm. also with them. So yan mm -hmm. yon. Um, mm -hmm. Rodi, wait up. Hold on. Why don't I? Oh, there. Okay. Can you show Rodi? I at least I said, you have to stop sharing. Sorry. So, uh, ganun ba? I, I, stopped, think I stopped. I stopped. Yeah, I stopped. Oh, how come it's not showing the slides, Rodi? Is it showing now? Oh, can you see the slides, at Cecil? Can you see the yeah, World small. War Two lecture series slide? Yeah, it's small. Oh, yeah. oh it's small. Right. Oh, oh. Anyway, yeah. so that's our um, second quarter schedule. Our ah. next episode, our, our guest speaker for our next episode will be Mr. Peter Parsons. He's oh, watching now. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Hi, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so he's up in Baguio. And um, episode five will feature Peter Parsons. That will be April 23 at 4 p.m. Uh -huh. That's a Saturday. And he will talk about uh, his father, Commander Chick Parsons, and uh, yes. 
the spy submarine missions which mm -hmm. came to um, rearm and resupply our guerrillas so that mm -hmm. you know when the liberating forces come kasama yung ating mga guerrilla so of course. that's the spy and there's a very Maris, little very few people know about this the spy submarine I think is writing about it <laughs> <laughs> Of Mr. Chick Parsons, uh, so Commander Chick Parsons. So that will be episode yes. five on April 23. Mm -hmm. And then for May, we have, because it's the fall of Corregidor, we'll commemorate yes. the, the Corregidor on May with our speaker, Mr. Glenn Williford. He's a um, naval defense and coastal defense expert. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote this book, Pacific Rampart, about Corregidor. Mm -hmm. So he will be mm -hmm. joining us on May. And then in June, it will be Mike mm -hmm. Banyos from Cagayan de Oro, uh, another ah. very active World War II writer and, and colleague of ours. And, and Mike will be talking about the liberation of Cagayan de Oro. So stay tuned. Ah. We have a lot of very interesting webinars. And, and uh, this is all designed for the enthusiasts and future enthusiasts. <laughs> yes, so, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, so if you um, attend these sessions, you will learn a lot and... Uh, Hopefully, yun nga, no, ma-inspire yung ating uh, lives by our World War II history. Right, right. Uh, so, and then, thank you. Ano pa bang uh, announcements natin? Ano pa? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Um, now, I hope you're showing the books. So, a lot of people have been asking us where to get World War II books in particular. Mm -hmm. So, our foundation, Philippine World War II Memorial Foundation, you can go to our FB page. Uh, we are selling online several World War II books there. Uh, maliit lang eh, no? Uh, I'm not sure if this is shown in big screen in your, you uh, know. So we have the uh, Mandirigma, which is a very new book. Uh, mm. This was uh, made by uh, Tony Ferredo, Albert Labrador, and this features all the uniforms of our fighting mm. men. So it's mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderfully made, beautiful layout, and it's a, it's a work of art and a work of love. So it's mm -hmm. available in our online uh, selling. We also have Dear Mother Patnam, which was mm -hmm. the diary of Marsha Lichauco during the Battle of Manila. We have the mm -hmm. Makapili and the Filipino collaborators during the Japanese occupation by Dr. Feliz Satan. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have the legacy of Jose Abad Santos by yours truly. Mm -hmm. We also have Old Manila by Carlos Quirino, uh, Foy and mm -hmm. the Filipinos by Richard Foy. Foy was an ensign in the USS Enterprise, uh, a Navy pilot mm -hmm. who was gunned yes. down. So yes. near Los Baños. And uh, mm -hmm. there, the account niya of how he was saved by the guerrillas, despite despite the community, the Filipino community, you know, uh, knowing that retaliation by the Japanese is really gonna happen to their community they still saved him no so it's a wonderful right. book and talks about the the, uh, the filipino uh, participation during liberation yes and yes. uh we have several other books that uh about world war ii so if you're interested you can just message us for these books and also uh honor the our documentary is streaming on uh the filipino channel there if you can see the it's, it's streaming all over eh asia europe and middle east so wow. we have this posted in our facebook page also for especially for our filipinos working abroad or staying abroad mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. also have it's also up on vimeo and this will make a very nice family movie night it's a, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. movie uh -huh. with all the you know age old uh, traditional values of love of country <laughs> mm -hmm. love of mm -hmm. uh, you know love of god love of family it's all there mm -hmm. so if you're looking for a movie night for the entire family then mm -hmm. you can stream honor on vimeo mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so uh this ends our episode five of uh, 2022 lecture series thank you very much at cecil thank As you always thank it's you. been a pleasure thank you know you listening to you and this. talking to you <laughs> she's my idol uh <laughs> superwoman uh, uh you Mutual, know the things that she's done for you know Mutual for admiration club <laughs> for the uh for this advocacy is really uh amazing 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 uh we hope we get more people like you at the cecil and thank you to all our viewers from way thank up you. in Ilo ilocos to down south wow. in Mindanao. peter mm -hmm. parsons in baguio i'll see you in april thank you very much Maraming and uh, please take care take care good night and see you in the next good morning episode. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.